Welcome back to Social Media for Your Business Online. I'm Victor Campos. Today's goal is to look at Google Plus and how it improves your business online. The goals for today are to experiment with different social media posting strategies, specifically using Google Plus. So we're going to assess which Google Plus communities are most effective for your brand. We're also going to create collections to organize your posts. Now you can reach Google Plus by going to plus.google.com. You'll be asked to create an account if you don't have one, and you'll easily be able to do so if you've got a Gmail account. So you can click Sign In, where you will be asked to provide your credentials or sign up. So if you haven't done so, you can go through the process of signing up for Google+. I already have an account. As an example, so the basic anatomy here on the left side, we have our menu, home, collections, community, profile, people, events, and notifications. So Google Plus is like every other social network in that you post content, you get reactions, and then you use it as a marketing tool. At the moment, my profile is very basic, very boring. There's nothing interesting or important to look at. Like Twitter before, you want to edit your profile and complete it. You want to add a biography and any relevant business information. Graphics about your business, profile image or logo, you want to complete all of that. Because who's going to be convinced to follow you or your business if it's not a legitimate looking business? So that's pretty straightforward. You edit your profile. You fill in the details. In the home screen, I will see content throughout Google Plus on a variety of topics. Under collections, you will see content grouped together conceptually by various people and companies on Google+. Communities are related to collections, but we'll see the big difference a little bit later. Again, it's concepts grouped together that you can become a part of. There's your profile. People you've connected with will be displayed under the People screen. Your followers and who you're following will be listed there. Google Plus has an interesting... Google Plus has an interesting feature as well. There are events. This is a little bit more complex than I want to get into, and it doesn't apply for everyone. But events are a possible way that your business can reach an audience. You can explore creating an event on your own or plan a hangout. And then you'll see notifications. Any activity that happens, you get followers, replies, etc. will be listed there. And settings and help. So the first thing we'll do is if we visit the collections screen, it changes, so you'll probably see something else besides what my screen shows. In this case, DIY, easy, quick, and cool projects. And this is by Sylvia Patricia B. Moreso. Then there's recipes, John Sullivan. There's fun for kids by How Does She. So people, businesses, organizations, etc., create a collection. A collection is sort of like a, 
a folder full of content. If I look at Fun for Kids, not click follow, but if I click on the icon, thumbnail, I'll see that How Does She has posted a variety of kid-friendly content on this collection. And it seems to be effective because, checking the statistic on the left, there are 909,522 followers. So nearly a million people are paying attention to this collection. When How Does She post, nearly a million people see it. Just think of the reach that you could have finding the right audience. I'll go back and see another example. Easy Vegan Recipes. This is by The Vegetarian Baker. So again, I can preview the collection and see that 165,000 followers. These are things posted a week ago, a few days ago, a few hours ago, all from The Vegan Baker. So these are links, these are pictures back to The Vegan Baker's website. Maybe I can create a community about my business that'll help me get attention too. This is one of the things I like about Google+. So these are featured. I may create a collection and I may be featured at some point. People may see my collection, then follow it, thereby bringing me traffic to my website, my online entity, etc. I can choose to follow collections as well. So if I choose to follow Feeling Hungry, I just click there. That's from Marriott. So 2 million subscribers from the Marriott. I followed a collection. I'm going to see the posts on my home screen. They're going to start to populate my home screen. Well, I want that. I want people to follow my collection so that I can get visibility. Let's see how it's pretty easy to create a collection. Under the collections screen, I'll select yours. I have no collection, so I'll click to create a collection. I give it a name. So let's say I've got a business where I'm a realtor. So I'll create a collection. San Diego Properties. I have a limit to how long I can make this collection name. So you can stay within the boundaries and still get pretty descriptive. This collection can be set to public or other forms of visibility. But I would recommend for a business, keep it public. I want as many people as possible to see it. Note that if I change it, it can't be changed another time. Next, I've got a tagline with 80 characters. So I would use this to write a sentence which has keywords of what people may be searching for. focusing on first-time home buyers. So if people are on Google+, or even a plain old Google search, they may search for some of these keywords, and my collection may appear. I may get that visibility. So I'll create the collection. I can then style the collection a little bit more. I can change the photo. There's a variety to choose from, or I can upload my own. A little bit of color styling. And then I can choose 
to have people that follow my profile on Google Plus can also follow this collection. Because actually, a person may choose to follow my profile, but not a collection. Whatever you choose here is fine. I usually leave it on. I want to give people the most opportunity to follow all my content. So then I'll save the collection. I have a few options at the top here. I can share the collection. So I can promote it on Google+. I can copy the link to send via email, for example, to send to people to see and to send to people to see. So every collection has a unique address that I can share. I can share it to Facebook or Twitter. I have various other options under the three dot menu. Editing some of the details, check who is following, delete the collection, and get help. Well, the difference here with something like Facebook or Twitter are that then I can upload content, pictures or video, etc., to this collection that could be easier for people to find. So then I get an edit button where I can post to my collection pictures, links, polls, locations. So each of these is pretty obvious. I can attach as many pictures as I want, actually, to create an album. On Twitter, I'm limited to four images, but here I can upload as many as I want. So just an example picture, obviously I would want to upload a picture that relates to this collection that I've created, but I'm just showing I can add a picture and some text. Unlike other social networks like Twitter, I don't have a limit here. I can actually write a huge essay if I wanted to. What I would write. depends on my marketing strategy. But in short, everything that you do on social media is in, is in service of a purpose. The purpose of my social media is for me to get hired. I'm a realtor, let's say, so I want to get hired. What would be valuable to share to find the right people to hire me? So imagining this is a great photo of a property that I'm listing, I could write something that entices people, and some call to action, like a phone number. Now this, of course, takes practice. It's difficult to lecture to a diverse group of people about what to share on social media. I can, of course, show how these networks work, but it's a little harder to show how they work for you in that, well, I'm a realtor, what should I share? I'm a private tutor, what should I share? I'm a painter, what should I share? So you'll get plenty of that sort of advice if you do a search online for your topic, such as advice for using social media for realtors. So practice will help you more to figure out what you need to share. And as we will look also later, another learning outcome that we'll have in this course is interpreting analytics data for future tactics. But for the moment, I'll just share this picture.
there it is, so all my followers would see this, which at the moment is zero. So we'll talk about building followers on Google Plus shortly. But I can also share a link. So if I provide a URL, it'll create a nice little preview for it that I can share. Let's say I have a link here from my blog, so I'll paste it. Google Plus creates a preview and grabs a snippet of text from the article. This is how to record a podcast. Again, this article doesn't fit with the idea that I created for this collection. I should be sharing realty and property information in this collection. So that's up to you to create collections and populate them. But I'm showing here you have these various sharing types. We're experimenting with different social media posting strategies. So I'll post. In this case, I only added the link. It's preview. I didn't add extra text. I could have. Next is a poll. Twitter has polls as well, but I like the Google Plus polls a lot better. You can add more choices, up to five choices, and each choice can have a picture attached to it. I could ask, what's your favorite type of cookie? And I could list chocolate chip, macadamia, oatmeal, etc., and add a photo. Twitter only allows up to four poll items and no picture. Pictures, visual content help you a lot better to reach an audience. So I won't create a poll, but that could be something interesting to share. And last, I have a location. This one is one of the more esoteric ones. Not everyone needs this one. Uh, this is to attach a location, especially if you've got a business at a location. If I were a bakery on Main Street, I could attach a location to show people this is where I'm currently at. If I'm a plumber, it doesn't make much sense for me to use it because I'm going to travel to people's locations instead. So those are some examples of posting types. I'm free to create as many collections as I want. I'm free to add as much content as I want. The challenge, of course, is for people to see it. So while I enjoy collections, let me talk about a more powerful feature of Google Plus that helps you build more of an audience. Those are communities. Communities are also collections of content. The big difference is that a collection is one person sharing content to the larger audience, and only they can post to that collection. A community is many people basically congregating around a topic posting on a topic. For example, there's beautiful pictures community, and this has 3 million members. If I preview the community by clicking, I can see a variety of pictures and content from a variety of people.
a lot of beautiful pictures. I'll go back. Then we look at foodies, 203,000 members. So this is a food community from a variety of people, photos, content, self-promotion. Well, if I start off a Google Plus account, I have no followers. I want to build followers. I'm going to go, therefore, to communities where people are at. I'm going to find communities about the topic of my business so that I can reach the audience. Let's just say, for example, I go to wildlife photography. I'm a photographer. I want to get hired. I go to the wildlife photography community. When I join a community, then I get the sharing button. It was not there a moment ago. I couldn't share to the community yet. But now that I've joined a community, I have access to 99,000 people, 99 potential followers or customers. Now I can post to that community. And it shows here, I'm about to post to the wildlife photography community. Again, text, pictures, links, polls, etc. So one of the most powerful features of Google Plus are communities. Find the right community, reach the right audience. But wait a minute, there are caveats. I have various bits of advice that I'd like to give regarding communities. Some communities are completely open for you to join. You just click join. Some say ask to join. This stamp collecting community has 16,000 members. This community is a bit more selective on who can join and post. How do they make that determination? Well, if I click ask to join, someone from the group gets a notification where they then go vet me. They go check my profile and see what my profile's about. Who am I? What am I posting? What am I about? And if I fit their criteria, then they will allow me to join. Now, who is they? They are the creators and moderators of a community, and they are not affiliated with Google, meaning someone created the black and white fine art photography group, but they are not a Google employee. Anyone can create a community. We can see at the top, yours, I have the ability to create a community. But I'll get back to that in a moment. So someone, a person or a company, created a community on Google+. People then joined the community and made it what it is. Oftentimes, there are moderators and rules in a community. So before you go off and join every community that you think you'll like, be sure to read about the community. Usually on the left side of the screen, you'll see a screen you'll Usually on the left side of the screen, you'll see a spot where you should read the rules. Taking photos of your homemade wonderful dishes and sharing menu with other with ideals and cooking tips and recipes. P.S. Let's keep soul food alive. When you need a recipe, just ask or go to our website. Some communities have a lot of rules. This seems to be pretty open-ended. You just keep it on topic. Let's see if I can find a community that is a little bit more defined. All right, here's an example, the Marvel community. Welcome to the Marvel Google Plus community. Rules, number one, do not post irrelevant things here. Two, no advertising other Google Plus communities. Three, respect other members, etc. No derogatory terms. So it goes on and on and on. Now, this 
is a community that has rules and is being moderated, so you should follow the rules because the consequences are, at the least, if you post something that violates the rules, the item may be removed from the community. Depending on various Let's say you repeatedly violate one of these rules. Well, what happens next? Most likely then you will be removed from the community and then you lose access to all of the people in that community. So if I was kicked out of this community, I would lose access to nearly 600,000 members. So check the rules, follow the rules, and everything will be good. Find a community related to your business, your topic, join it, follow the rules, post, and you'll reach the right audience. It is one of the most powerful reasons to join Google+. Other caveats that I would recommend try to join communities with a good amount of people. Here's an example. I'm going to search at the top to find a community. Real estate. I'm going to browse the real estate communities. I see real estate, 171 members. Real estate news, 177. Real estate, 34,000. So based on these four at the top, I would recommend most likely to join the real estate community with 34,000. These small ones are much too small to, to be viable. There's going to be limited amount of content and interaction and results for you. So try to join communities with a few thousand people. I usually say at least 1,000 people. But that may be still a small amount. So. A few thousand people, a few thousand members is good. Here I've got real estate with 34,000, real estate with 36,000, real estate marketing with 22,000. I should join all three, right? Well, what you should also do is scope out the community for a moment. Visit it. Browse to see who's posting. Are the same people posting over and over? If they are, then it's not a very diverse community and you're not going to reach that many people if it's the same people over and over. Next, check the statistics below each of these posts. You'll see if people are liking it. That's the plus one. You'll see if people are commenting. You'll see text below. Are people sharing? You'll see statistics. So if people are active, if a variety of people are active, if people are commenting and replying and such, it's then probably a good idea to join a community. So the best advice I can give you if you're going to get into Google Plus is join communities, share authentic content to them, and follow the rules. We'll see in this class, which is an overview of some popular social networks, you will then figure out what your best audience is, where it exists. Maybe you'll become a Twitter superstar. Maybe you'll get really good at Facebook once we talk about Facebook. Maybe Google Plus is where you'll find your audience, your customers. So with this overview of a class, you'll be able to figure out what works best for you. 
Come back for the next video and we'll keep exploring social networks. Come back for the next video and we'll keep exploring social media for your business. This has been Victor Campos.